Thank you for joining me to keep up with the fast world of data science. Now buckle up as we leap inside the black box. It's 2020 and it's election year here in the US. Every four years we elect a president and data and statistics are at the heart of elections. Polls are surveys that are used to predict the future. And caucus map, that's a term you may have heard of recently. That's a convoluted formula. We don't really have a one person, one vote system here in the US. If you live in smaller towns and smaller states or rural areas, uh, your votes tend to get upgraded, uh, whereas if you live in larger cities and urban centers, your vote will likely get downweighted. What started this month are the primary elections. This is a series of contests, state by state, in which each of our two major political parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, select who will represent them in the general election to be held in November. The news channels are filled with uh, election coverage 24 seven. And with that comes an avalanche of commercials. And the social media is also buzzing. A lot of the pundits are making a mess of the data. Some of them are deliberately misleading viewers uh, while others are inadvertently spreading false information. What I want to do in this video is to take one of these talking points that have been circulating widely uh, recently and discuss the merits from the perspective of a data scientist. After the primary in New Hampshire on the Democratic side, and I'm actually going to ignore the Republican primaries because uh, it is a mystery that the Republicans will be nominating uh, President Donald Trump. So the mainstream media were reporting that Senator Bernie Sanders won uh, the New Hampshire primary with 26% of the votes. And they also told us that this vote total was much lower than uh, in 2016 when Bernie Sanders also won the New Hampshire primary uh, against Hillary Clinton by a margin of 60% to 40%. All of the mainstream pundits were saying the same thing, that this victory is a horrible sign for Bernie Sanders. The New Yorker screamed that Bernie Sanders won less than half of the vote share in 2020 compared to 2016. BuzzFeed, for example, uh, said that the margin of victory for Bernie Sanders was much lower in 2020 than in 2016. But all these pundits are wrong. Uh, to quote my friend, Alberto Cairo, uh, something he said on Twitter, one pundit is sometimes noise, but when you aggregate 10 pundits, you very often still get noise. And that's because the pundits are echoing each other's bad talking points. It doesn't take a math genius to, to realize that um, if you are facing 10 other uh, candidates um, in an election, you're gonna get lower vote share than if you're only facing one other candidate. To see how absurd it is to compare vote shares in a two person race to one in a 10 person race, um, I'm going to give you uh, two scenarios to think about. Exhibit one. Just last week, um, Senator Sanders won the Nevada caucuses with 47% of the votes. It turns out that in 2016, Sanders also won 47% of the votes in the Nevada caucuses. So I hereby declare that Sanders did equally as well in 2016 as he did in 2020. That's exactly the logic of these pundits. 47% versus 47%. Same vote share, same performance. 
What could be wrong with this? Here's the problem. The 40% share that he got in 2020 was a landslide victory. He got more votes than the next three competitors combined. But in 2016, the same 47% of the vote total meant he lost to Hillary Clinton, who got 53% of the votes. I hate to break this to you. Don't just take as base value what these pundits are telling you. They often make a big mess of the data. Now on to exhibit two. Imagine we have one three-person contest and one two-person contest. Candidate A won 50% of the votes in the three-person contest, and candidate X won 50% of the votes in the two-person contest. Now, did candidate A or candidate X have the better performance? Common sense tells us that candidate A did better than candidate X. Um, in the three-person context, candidate A with 50% vote share would definitely be the winner. Now, candidate X with 50% vote share in a two-person context may not even have won the contest. It might have to be decided by a coin toss, just like in some of the Iowa caucuses. Now, what do you think those mainstream pundits would say about this scenario? Well, to use their logic, since candidate A and candidate X both won, the same vote share, 50%, candidate A must have done equally well as candidate X. Now that sounds absurd, and it is absurd. Now it appears that some pundits realize the absurdity of their logic, and so they sought other angles, more creative angles to make the point. Political tried a different angle by honing in on only the independents. So uh, what they said was uh, Bernie Sanders won 29% of the votes of independents in 2020, but he won 73% of independent voters in 2016. Well, it's a different statistic, but it's really the same fallacy. We know that it's wrong to compare a two-person uh, election to an election involving 10 or more candidates. But the pundits are not wrong in realizing that people want to know the answer to the following question. Given the vote share of Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020, how do we judge the level of competitiveness of Sanders this year versus four years ago. So the pundits are asking the right question, they just don't have a good answer. A good answer actually requires something called a statistical adjustment. Going back to exhibit two uh, for a second, we know instinctively that 50% vote share in a three-person race is worth more than a 50% vote share in a two-person race. So the question is, how much should we adjust the 50% in a three-person race upwards in order to be able to compare it to the 50% in a two-person race? It turns out that the math is not straightforward. Um, I've actually worked this out on over a number of blog posts, the links of which are shown below, uh, and you can consult those for the details. Um, in this video, I'm just going to give you the high-level findings. In a three-person race, if you get 50% vote share, my methodology will upgrade the 50% to 60%. Going the other direction is actually easier because we know that 50% vote share in a two-person race is 
and even race. Both competitors are equally uh, competitive. So the equivalent in a three-person race is that each competitor gets a third of the votes. So if we want to take the 50% in a two-person race and adjust it downwards to 33%, that would be the equivalent in a three-person race. I also computed adjustments for the New Hampshire and the Nevada contests. Senator Bernie Sanders won both races. Um, in the New Hampshire race, which I analyzed as an 11-person contest, um, I would adjust up um, Sanders' vote share of 26% to about 65%. That's the equivalent in a two-person contest. Now, in Nevada, he won 47% of the votes, and that translates to just over 71% in a two-person race. One last thing. What vote share must the winner of a contest get in order for us to declare the race as a landslide victory? That's ultimately a subjective question. So what I can offer you here is a framework that you can use to think about this. On the one extreme, we have the one-sided contest. So if we have two competitors A and B, in a one-sided contest, candidate A wins 100% of the votes and candidate B got nothing. On the other extreme, we have a 50-50 split of the votes. The competition is evenly matched. And every other vote distribution is going to sit in the middle of these two extremes. So a 60-40% uh, vote split, com when compared to a 50-50% even race, means that the winner took 10% more from the loser. Now, in the extreme, the winner could take up to 50% more than the loser. So for me, the 60-40% split does not a landslide make. It's a win, maybe a comfortable win, but not a blow up. If you like this video, you can help us build our channel by sharing it with your friends and subscribing. See you next time inside the black box. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution.